Hello. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to configure routed ports, VRP, RPVST, VRF, BGP, and ISSU on our switches. And here you can see I have two switches in my A2 network. I have an MS390 and a C9300. I also have two C9200Ls in my QA line. And I want to separate my Spanish tree domains between my QA lab and my A2 network. And I could do that by leveraging routed ports. Now I've gone ahead and already pre-configured my C9200 in my QA lab as a routed port. And I'm gonna go ahead and configure the C9300 now. But before we do that, let's pop into our cloud CLI and verify the port status. We do that by using the show interface status command. And we can see that in fact, it's still in Trunk. Let's go ahead and verify that there isn't an IP address assigned, and there isn't. And we can do that by using the show IP in brief command. So now let's go ahead and configure our C9300 port 3 as a router port. And we could do that by going to switching, configure, routing, and DHCP. Here we'll click add interface, and we're going to change the interface mode to router port. We're going to select our C9300, base for the module, and we're going to configure port 3, Then we'll give this a name, RP C9200L. And then for the subnet, we'll go ahead and give it a 192.168.103.20 slash 31. And you can see we're actually supporting slash 31s now for point-to-point -point links. And for my interface IP address, I'm going to go ahead and give it a dot twenty, and the C9200L is going to be dot twenty one. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that. And now let's go ahead and we'll pop over to our cloud CLI, and we can verify that the configuration, in fact, was pushed. And so we're going to use that same show interface status command. And here we can see that, in fact, it did change from a trunk to a router port. And here we're going to see and verify that the IP address did get assigned, and it did. So we can see that the IP address has been assigned to port three now. And let's see if we could ping. RC90-200 in our QA lab. And we can, success. Now I want to really isolate this environment. And so to do that, we can go ahead and we can configure a VRF. So I'm going to pop back over to my A2 network. I'm going to go to organization, VRFs. And you can see there is a default one configured, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new one specifically to the QA lab. And now we can go ahead and add interfaces to this VRF. So we'll go over to switching. Routing DHCP. And I'm going to go ahead and select that new router port that we configured. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to that QA lab VRF. Those settings have been changed. And so you can see here, I also have another interface configured that is specifically for the QA lab. And it goes directly to my MX, again, to isolate that traffic coming in and then going out for internet connectivity. Any firewall rules we need to apply, we can. So let's go ahead and add this interface as well to that VRF. And we'll go ahead and we'll save those changes. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and hop back over to our cloud CLI and we'll take a look and verify 
that we did have that VRF configured. And here we can see, we do have the VRF QA lab configured. And we have both interfaces, port three and port five. Port three again was the interface that connected into the QA lab and port five is the port for the QA uh, directly to the MX environment. And so now that we have that separated, let's go ahead and configure BGP. And so we'll take a look at our C9300. We'll do a short BGP sum, and we can see that we do not have any BGP configured today. Now I've gone ahead and I pre-configured our MS390, and we're gonna go ahead and configure IBGP between the two. And so to do that, we're gonna go switching, configure, BGP routing. And you can see I've already configured BGP on my MS390. So let's go ahead and configure it on the C9300 now. So we'll go ahead and select 65,000, which is already pre-configured. We'll select this router. And then I've configured a loopback address for the 9300 as well. And we'll go ahead and we'll click Add Router. And so here we can go ahead and enable BGP on this. We'll save. And then let's go ahead and start configuring. So we'll click there, we'll click edit. We can see that it's already enabled. We can see that our router ID is gonna be loopback 11. And then here we have options to redistribute connected routes, static routes, also, if we wanted to add a local network, we could that as well, which would get advertised out with BGP. So here, let's go ahead and configure our BGP peer group. So here we'll name it MS390 IBGP. Remote AS will be 65,000. We'll leave these defaults as is. And here for update source, we're also going to use our loopback 11, our loopback address for that as well. And again, we'll keep all these defaults. We'll click next top self, soft reconfiguration inbound. And then if we did have some prefix lists or some AS path access lists, uh, we'd be able to drop down and select those. So we'll go ahead and we'll save. And for now that we see that we have our peer configured. So let's go ahead and add a peer group. But first, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll add a range. Um, so we have a couple options here. If we wanted to go ahead and add a range to listen off for BGP, we can go ahead and do that as well. Same thing, we'll go ahead and we'll add the range and we'll save that. And then we'll go back in and we will add a peer group specific to the MS390. And so we're actually going to be pairing with the loopback address on the MS390 as well. And we'll go ahead and we'll activate the peering. And then we have the option here to do some peer overrides. Um, if we don't, it will inherit what we had configured initially from the peer group settings. We'll go ahead and we'll add peer. We'll save that. And so that now should go ahead and push that configuration to the C9300. So now let's go ahead and we'll go back over to our cloud CLI and we'll go ahead and we'll take a look and see the BGP configuration that got added. 
So go back to our Cloud CLI. We'll launch Terminal. And we will do a show IP BGP sum. And here we can see our IBGP neighbor is up to our MS390. And we can see that we're actually receiving eight prefixes from the MS390 as well. And so one other thing I wanted to show you was with regards to support for our PBST. And so we can do that by going to switching, switch settings. And it's just as easy as clicking this radio button here to be able to switch it back. And then the other thing I wanted to show you was with regards to ISSU. So if we go to firmware upgrades, go to scheduled, and if we click our switch, we'll click schedule. So here you can see we have the ISSU option now. So if we did have any Catalyst 9500s within that network, we would be able to upgrade them using ISSU. And so that's it. That's how easy it is to configure router ports, VRP, RPVST, VRF, BGP, and ISSU with a Meraki dashboard on your cloud managed catalyst switches.